Check one, check two, check one, check two, check one, check two. Hello, welcome back to What's in My Bag. Uh, today I'm going to show you my Action X50. And as you can see, it's currently set up for backcountry skiing. My original plan was to head up into the hill today, but uh, the weather's gotten warm and it doesn't look like the snow's gonna be very good. So I'm gonna do this here. Basically, this is pretty much exactly what I would have packed. My plan was to stay in a hut and then tour out of that hut. So that hut is probably at about 2,500 meters. And then uh, I would have climbed to probably just under 3,000 meters. So in that higher alpine, I would have needed uh, crampons, potentially an ice axe, definitely would need my poles and my board and my skins. I'll start with the outside, kind of take everything off and apart, and uh, I'll go through how I pack for this kind of adventure. Uh, first thing you'll notice is I have a split board on the side here. Uh, it's in split mode right now. This is how I'll carry it if I'm boot packing or post holing up something steeper where I'm not skinning up. Uh, right here, you can see this black strap is actually TPU. So this strap's more durable. It's gonna last longer. It's gonna be tougher around sharp edges of your skis or board. You'll also notice that we leave about an inch and a half from the seam so that the buckle isn't on the edge of the board. So you, when you actually set up your, your skis in an H-frame or uh, A-frame kind of position, just consider that. Try and keep your buckle off the edge. We have these quick uh, release glove friendly buckles. So we'll just open this up. One thing, uh, if you're a snowboarder and you're, you're packing a split board, you want to position your skis so you don't have too much uh, hanging below the bag. You want to be a little on the higher end up top, mostly because when you're hiking up steeper terrain, you don't want your board hitting the back of your legs, especially if you have crampons on. So we're just going to take these off right now. So the next thing is the poles. Uh, if I was in a position where I was boot packing and I had the board on my side, I'll put the poles on the front, but generally I'll put them in the side here. I'll just show you how I would do that. So basically I would open this side pocket and I would just take the pole, put it in like this, put it in like that. It's got a nice base to grab it. So this is more for when I am snowboarding down the mountain. I always put the compression strap through the actual uh, handle of the pole. That's just in case I happen to take a tumble. I don't want to lose my poles. So that's how that would get mounted. And then here in the front, I've got my ice axe. Both the ice axe and crampons, I don't use those all the time, but if I'm going to the higher alpine or if it's really windy, uh, I'll definitely pack a crampon. Our ice axe uh, attaches just like old school ice axe loops, very simple. Okay, so next we'll go into uh, front pocket. When we're talking about backcountry skiing, this is basically your avalanche pocket. So I have my shovel, got a snow saw, my probe, I've got a scraper, clean my board off from any frozen ice. I've got my uh, neck gaiter uh, thing, it keeps me warm, protects me from the sun. That's all I'll keep in there. Uh, you don't want to put too much stuff in this pocket with your avalanche gear. You kind of want to have good access to that. So one tip for, for everyone that's using a, a shovel, get a decent sized shovel. Don't buy the small tiny shovels. So the other thing is, this if you're attaching a snowboard to the front, or anything that, that's wider than, than these loops, you just pull this out and uh, attach it like that. So you kind of have two options. You have the full option or you can divide it into two pieces. So next let's go into the top compartment. Uh, right now, I've got my jacket, which is just a shell jacket. I have a water bottle here. Now I use, this is a 750 milliliter water bottle. I use this style bottle because it seals good. It's a Camelback. It's actually a road bike water bottle. The reason I use that is because it has a really good seal, but also if I'm doing a big uphill, you know, it fits perfectly on my shoulder strap pocket. So that's 750 milliliters of water, you know, that I have access to right here with quick access to it, stay hydrated, all that stuff. When I'm descending, I will put the water bottle back in my bag. So I have a set of goggles. 
I don't always pack this, but uh, I have a big uh, down jacket. This is a, a down jacket that's designed to go over, over my shell. I prefer those because I don't wear the down jacket that much, only when I'm kind of standing around for a short amount of time. I can just quickly take it off and stick it back in the bag. And then I've got a, a running jacket, which is in this little pouch here. And this kind of jacket I'll use if I'm ski touring up. So this is an ultralight jacket. I'll usually use this on the way up just to like block wind or just add a little layer of, uh, to keep the heat in from my uh, thermal. So this is the shirt I usually wear to keep me warm under, under my shell jacket. So I'll have this, I'll put this over top just to block a little more wind if I need it. And again, keep the heat in between this layer and here, trap that body heat. And then I have my crampons, put them in here as well. And then I have my skins. So I'm carrying my skins in a, actually a small core unit bag, mostly because these are, this is a good material and it's gonna keep the moisture inside the bag. It's not gonna bleed through the bag. Okay, and then let's just open this for the quick access. So I have my front pocket here, the big zipper pocket you can see. And uh, right now I've just got some snack food, Realistically, I'll probably have, you know, just things like chapstick, sunscreen, or kind of daily stuff you use. But honestly, at this point in the season, I'm getting reacclimatized to backcountry skiing. So everything's pretty empty right now, but generally they'd go in that pocket. Uh, I still have another pocket in the back, which I'm not using right now. Just for some perspective, uh, my core unit comes to this, this point right here. So potentially you can fill your pack up to about here. So you got a lot of room for, for your extra gear. So we'll just enter the rear panel now. And you can see that I don't have a ton of gear in here, but I've got my usual ultra wide. I do have some, some filters in here, divider pocket, got my remotes in there, a blower 70 to 200 on, uh, on the A7 III. And then I have my mid wide. In backcountry kind of ski situations, I don't really pack too much gear. I keep it minimal. And there's definitely gonna be days when I'm not even gonna pack this much gear. There might be days when I swap out this whole bottom row for a drone or just packing, you know, one lens and body set up. It's always different. I'm not a professional ski snowboard photographer, so I don't really pack like that. Um, I just mostly take those photos for myself or if I'm out with one of our team guys, if I have the opportunity to shoot them, then I might then I might pack differently, but generally I keep it pretty tight. And I think most backcountry ski photographers who are actually doing touring understand that there's definitely a compromise and a trade-off when you're packing your bag. You gotta, you gotta be pretty minimalist when it comes to things. So the last thing I'll show you here is the side access, how I've got it set up. So skiing is definitely one of those things where it's good to have side access. I think skiing and mountain biking are really where it's nice to have that advantage of just being able to pull over, pull out your camera quickly and get a shot. So day in the backcountry, I'll have my 70 to 200 mounted because uh, you tend to be a little more distant from the people you're shooting. So that's there, ready to go. And you can see how easy it is to put in and quickly change a lens out of the side. And then on the other side, and I will show you this pocket. Okay, so I have, uh, I have a backup toque. I've got a, a hat to wear, another Sealy uh, running hat, because these, again, they dry quick. You can literally like drain them if they get too sweaty and wet. And the other thing is I've got a backup set of gloves here. You'll see these things are amazing. They're a, a trail running glove put these on and these are basically just a lining but as you can see you know they're fingerless gloves not really my style but they breathe well you know they're, when you're carrying your poles and you're touring there's some there's some weather where this is all I need nice and light but they also have this so I don't know if you can see that but there's like a little sleeve right here where this came out of, and then you can see, actually do this, and you can see that this comes out, and now I've got a mitt 
I got a thumb cover. So you can imagine these are made for jogging in, in cooler temperatures. They work incredibly well because they're not sealed. So they breathe well, but they're also, it's a wind layer, right? And when, you, when you're dealing with wind on your hands, you need to cover them up because you're gonna lose a lot of body heat like that. So these things are great. They're super minimal. I always keep them in my bag in the winter because I just, I never know when I'm gonna use them. So I think that's it. Pretty basic. I generally don't pack a lot of gear when I'm in the back country, although looking at the ground here, it looks like a lot of gear. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.